Hi everyone! Well, it has been a while since we had some technical stuff reviewed on our channel, so it is finally a time to continue. And today we're gonna repair and restore one pretty cool computer made in Ukraine in the early 90s. And I need it for one project. Those who follow our Computers of Chernobyl series on our Patreon page probably have seen this. Those are recreated screenshots of the original software that controlled Chernobyl sarcophagus in the late 80s. There were many specialized programs and applications created back then in Chernobyl Zone, but unfortunately mostly they are already long gone. And only what remained are screenshots, printouts, maybe actual photos of the displays. And I got an idea, what if you make a kind of demo application, say, for DOS, um, that will recreate some known parts of these interfaces which are really interesting and you'll be able to download it at some point and actually try it on your own screen. But here is the thing, I love to use retro computers, not just have them standing on some shelf as a display exhibit. So what I want to do today is to make a kind of workstation which you can use for programming of this demo application and I will make it based on this pretty interesting machine, which actually worth a review. And as a bit of addition, I also found an interesting Ukrainian-made XT80 keyboard, which will also test along with this hardware. But besides, I have some really cool news for you. Well, those who watched our previous episodes will understand immediately. Soon. And we also made pretty big progress on the restoration of the mainframe panel of YES 1060. I remind you exactly the same device is standing in a forgotten data center of the Chernobyl 2 Duga over the horizon radar. So I made a long update video you can find on our Patreon page. So we invite you to join us there. You know, it's like a radioactive cave of wonders. Link is in the description below. And now let's look to our hero. Well, this machine was assembled by Ukrainian company named Infort in 1993. It is based on an 8386 processor board, and well, at first glance it looks pretty usual, but later it appeared that inside it has some secrets. Its case is made from a very thick metal, it's really heavy, and somewhat it reminds me yes, 1849, which is a late Soviet computer. Well, it's also very slim and takes a little space, which is big advantage for me. And that's because inside there is a riser board and cards are arranged this way. I'm not sure if I'm calling this correctly, but this large input-output shield is removable, so it gives me an impression that the case itself could be used for something else as well. The guy who sold it to me told that it faced a power surge and therefore completely dead, so let's look inside, try to repair it and do something. Well, we have here an MG8517 motherboard and a couple of cards which are inserted into this yellow riser card. That riser is pretty interesting, because if motherboard is some Taiwanese, this one is made from ex-Soviet components. And we surely will take a look to it a little bit later. Also, look at those connectors for front panel. Of course, each wire is with a tube with a number, and well, a distinct technique from that very times. I decided to remove the front panel to make some retro brighting and actually made a discovery. So it appeared that below the panel there is an entire circuit board for the front controls. And here are a few LEDs, also capacitors and those two chips. One of them is a set of six inverters and another one contains two D triggers. There are also a few correction wires which are hidden on the back. You know, I really have no logical explanation why they needed to make this, except just to make this turbo button, just a push button, not a switch. But in fact, here everything, even a PC speaker, passes through those chips. Well, if you have any ideas or guesses, please just share them in the comments. So, to restore the color of plastic, we need just a few things. First, and the most important, we take a creamy oxygen, which is normally used for hair bleaching. Well, I use one from some Ukrainian brand, it has a 12% concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Then, you need a stretch film, some papers and some detergent or methanol, for instance, for cleaning the surface. Most important, it should not damage the plastic. 
And here, important thing, if you never made any retro brining, I want to point your attention that proper cleaning and drying is really important, because everywhere you leave the dirt, you eventually have still yellowed plastic. So, next I place the film and cover all the plastic with the oxygen. I advise to wear gloves, because this 12% is pretty sufficient to make a slight burn. Well, I personally do not wear them, and that's solely because the best way I can detect is film is not sealed in the end. But what is really important is to protect your eyes. Alright, next we wrap the film around, so this way we protect what is inside from drying, uh, because otherwise we can get unwanted spots, and then we place it to a strong sun. Ultraviolet and heat will act as a catalyzer, and we nearly immediately can see the oxygen emission. Well, we all need some time for this chemical reaction, so in the meanwhile I will remove everything from the case. And here we have our ex-Soviet razor card. Well, I really don't know if those ISA connectors specifically are locally made, uh, but the socket board and those yellow capacitors are surely local. Now let's remove the motherboard. Well, it is a low-end board on the AI all-in-one chipset. Um, and what is interesting, it has no ISA slots populated, only a single one for that riser. Well, to be honest, I can't recall that I have seen ever the Baby 80 board with just a single ISA slot, but at the same time, when those computers were widely used, I could only dream about having my own, so in fact I probably miss it really, really much. Well, this very motherboard is pretty badly corroded because of battery leakage, so I will change the board later. And in the meanwhile, our part is ready, so let's install it back. Ok, next we need to install a power switch, and a funny detail that those switches were typically used in the kitchen appliances. And look what we got! I have to say, I really love the result. Ok, the next we install a floppy drive, and here are those little details. The screws on all the drives were sealed with the white paint, so you could see immediately if someone attempted to remove them. That was actually a very typical way of marking such connections. And on another side, the drive is secured using such a strange clip. Due to a very slim design of the case, the optimal assembling sequence is a bit strange, so next we will install the new motherboard. I have only this one, it is also 386 processor based, and here is a little trouble because a few openings for screws are not matching the stands on the chassis, so I will have no other option than just insulate them and install as is. Frankly, I never use it risers, especially ex-Soviet, so I'm not sure if the ISA bus will work correctly, so let me know in the comments what you think. Well, anyways, I pretty much like how does it look. Ok, as for cards, uh, here won't be anything extraordinary, it will be just a sound card and some generic VGA card, because it was missing in here. But what is interesting, there is no lock for cards in this EO shield, so basically they just hold in a place only on one screw and an ISA connector. The original hard drive here was completely non-functional, so instead I will use a disk on model, which is way more reliable, I have one already with various programs, from, pull it from my old machine. Well, somehow the geometry of all this is not very well matching, especially it's visible on a multi-card. Next we install and secure in the place the 5-inch drive. And finally we install and connect the power supply unit. I'm going to use one from the Poisk2 computer, which is uh, from the famous Electron Mush factory in Kiev. And as far as I remember, in Ford computers also used the same power supplies. From outside they look pretty the same as usual, just thicker metal and they are more shiny, but inside there are much more electronics and there are two circuit boards. And finally we close the cover, I also repainted it just a little, it is secured by not only many screws, so in result the casing is really solid, nothing is loose. 
Well, to test all this setup, we need a keyboard, and here I got something special. So, this very keyboard was made in 1994 here in Ukraine at Kyiv Radio Electronics Factory, which was famous, for example, for TV sets named Slavutich. So, this keyboard is also called like that, Slavutich. That word is a poetical name of a deeper river on which Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, is standing. So, what do we have in the box? Uh, apart from the keyboard itself, here is a brochure with a, such a brief documentation. I checked it, and it's written that the keyboard has a resource of 15 years of use. I have to say, I pretty much trust this, because it's mechanical and quality is good, plastic is also durable, so should last pretty long. Maybe not 15 years, but long. And, by the way, on the back it has a switch, and it can be used as XT, and AT, so also very handy. What is really interesting that there is a separate button for Kyrillic layout and also a corresponding LED. Okay, so I assembled it all together. The only one thing I will use a TFT monitor because my eyes already too damaged for using the CRT, and let's test. Well, everything works amazing, including the keyboard. Nothing freezing, all good. By the way, an interesting thing for future. I have here two applications that are training software for RBM car reactor operators. So, let us know in the comments if you would like to have an episode with the review of those applications. The only one thing to make it work, I will need to find somewhere the mathematical coprocessor, because otherwise they won't start. Well, unfortunately, I didn't figure out how to make this Kyrillic button work, uh, despite I have a resident driver for the Kyrillic alphabet in the memory. Uh, but uh, if you have any ideas how to make it work, just write us in the comments, we will really much appreciate that. And um, back to the initial idea, the development of the demo application will progress as much as we will obtain new screenshots or printouts. So, all that stuff you will be able to find on our Patreon page, and link is in the description below. So, for now, that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video, and see you next time.